Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Omega Speedmaster Racing Coaxial Master Chronometer. You can see and can purchase this Basel World 2017 sensation on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. And please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Omega Speedmaster Racing Coaxial Master Chronometer. Now the 44 and a quarter millimeter case was not new, nor was the basic caliber 9900, well at least in master chronometer form, but it was the combination of the resurrection of Omega's historic racing dial with the arrival of the master chronometer standard to this family of Speedmasters that created the watch you see here. Now, Launched as of 2017, several variants were available, of which this is undoubtedly the most striking and, from a functional standpoint, the most legible. You can see on my wrist, it's the well-known 44 and a quarter millimeter case. The watch does have plenty of girth to it, but perhaps not as much as you might have suspected. 15.3 millimeters thick means this is wearable with a suit jacket, a sport jacket, or blazer cuff, though the cantilevered profile of the ceramic and white enamel tachymeter bezel will cause a very tight dress cuff underneath the suit jacket to get hung up a little bit. From lug to lug, it's quite reasonable. Under 50 millimeters for me is the gold standard for watches that could be worn on wrists from 14 to 16 centimeters and my wrist is 16 centimeters. The fact that this 44 plus is less than 50 millimeters at 49.8 millimeters lug to lug means you can easily wear this watch on a smaller wrist than mine right down to I believe 14 centimeters in circumference with security and decent proportion thanks to its close cropped cut across the wrist. Now it is substantial. I do feel that this is a weighty watch. Watch. It's of steel. I don't get the impression that it's precious metal, but it is what you imagine when you imagine a premium watch. Most folks thinking of luxury watches don't imagine something unnervingly light, so this watch delivers on that count. It has a reassuring solidity about it. The strap is a semi-gloss black contrasting stitch, minimally bolstered alligator leather. You can see there's a little bit of bolstering to match the swell of the lugs, and it thins out dramatically after that with folded edges, a light gray contrast contrasting stitch. You can see medium rectangular scale alligator leather on the top and there's actually a wonderfully supple natural grained calf skin on the bottom. Now the clasp is familiar to Omega fans but it's an excellent piece so there's no need to change. You'll see alternately satin finished and polished on the outside. Look at the detailing. The Omega logo itself is polished amid a satin finished plane. Polished edges. You can see on the inside the finish is muted but never indifferent. The satin grain of the interior shares billing with a minderless system. Now you can see the stainless steel clasp tucks excess strap length underneath its body so there's no need for minder loops to keep any excess secure. The strap simply tucks underneath and it looks very clean when closed. Also because you have the luxury of twin triggers, this large and substantial sports watch will stay on the wrist and secure. No clamshells here, no friction fit. This is how it should be done in every case. The watch has a handsome contrasting finish about its case. This is a standard satin flank polished bevel Omega professional case, let's call it, because we see the same profile on Seamaster and Speedmaster models. This is the design inspired by the Moonwatch. Here, not a professional, not a Moonwatch, but the family resemblance is important to Omega and thus the bevels are retained. Now the satin finish is longitudinal, so it matches the sweep of the case band. And you'll note that the underside, the lip of the tachymeter bezel is of high polish. When we turn the watch over, you can see that the tachymeter scale, which is anodized aluminum on the original Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch, here is rendered in a deluxe combination of, and let me get a little bit closer for details, bump, 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 okay, combination of gloss black ceramic for scratch resistance with a baked in white enamel. So you're not looking at an anodized metal ring here, you're looking at a combination of ceramic and enamel. Now the watch does recall a little bit of the Moonwatch aesthetic by using a dramatically domed sapphire rather than a plexiglass, the sapphire having the same scratch resistance effectively as the ceramic for practical purposes. If you're not likely to scratch one, you're not likely to scratch the other. I'll add that the sapphire creates a little bit of off-axis plexiglass distortion, but gives the watch resilience and long-wearing durability. 
Moving on to the dial, it has a pebbly gray grain about it. This is described as the white dial, though to be sure it's best described as a granular silver. There are a few orange highlights to remind you of its Omega racing dial heritage. And then there are blackened hands and indices with a large amount of luminescence. By the way, stay tuned till the end of the video. I'm going to do a loom shot then. Contrast is excellent by day possibly even better by night due to the amount of loom applied. Now everything that is applied, hands and indices, white gold because this is a flagship piece. You can see the checkered flag intermediate notches of the racing style minute track. You can see how it's a staggered design of slash cut calibrations to create the appearance of a checkered flag. Some variants of this style are more colorful than others. This is one of the more upscale, refined, and muted takes, but as I said earlier, it's also one of the most legible. Twin registers give the watch a little bit of a vintage look, but they do give you three register functionality, chronograph seconds, and then courtesy of the counter at three o'clock, you have a mono counter for coaxial hours and minutes. And when I reset, you'll see exactly what I mean. So you have three registers, but only two counters, of course, constant seconds at nine o'clock. A discrete date window, as you can see, with a very subtle step down from the plane of the dial to the date disc, the aperture's step creating a more gradual transition from one to the other. It's just an upscale touch among many on this dial, which is beautifully executed. Now I should talk, since we're looking at the dial, about the functional features of the movement before I turn it over. It's a vertical clutch system, so you can see how the chronograph seconds hand always starts without a jump. If I were to leave it running, there would be no additional wear, tear, or hazard to the movement because of the vertical clutch. Moreover, the vertical clutch allows the system always to reset precisely to the index of 12. There's no play in the system, unlike a lateral clutch. You do get the tactile pleasure and the audible click of operating a traditional column wheel mechanism. And it's worth mentioning, that the watch features both hacking seconds, so you pull the crown to extremity, and you'll note the seconds hand stops. Now you can synchronize to a reference time, but the watch has another thoughtful refinement in the form of a time zone feature. Now if I were to start the chronograph, you can see as I'm doing this, the watch continues to tick and keep time, so as I jump forward or backwards across time zones, I'm not interfering with the chronometric precision of this chronometer. Now you'll also note, as I turn back, if I'm traveling either direction across the international date line, I can drive the date in either direction with no hazard to the movement. 50 meters water resistant. Let's turn it over and pop the hood. This is the Omega Master Coaxial Master Chronometer, caliber 9900. If you remember the original coaxial tri-level 9300 column wheel vertical clutch chronograph movement, well, this is that. Two mainspring barrels in series, providing 60 hours of power reserve, automatic winding. The decoration is gorgeous, as you can see that arabesque coat radiating out from the center. You'll also note that the screw heads have been blackened rather than blued or polished. 54 joules, coaxial escapement, th uh, three level, the tri-level system, allowing the system to meet the original goals set by George Daniels of long-term timing stability, short-term timing precision, and finally, reduced maintenance. Now it is a tough movement. You can see a full balance bridge with a free sprung index. The two features combining to give the watch greater shock resistance. And though you can't quite see it, there is an SI14 silicon hairspring that renders this watch effectively amagnetic, that is resistant to magnets. You can see how the case back is a dramatically domed sapphire. It adds a little bit of thickness to the case, but also allows you to get a better lateral view. If you look at the caliber off axis, you get a better lateral view if you want to get a sense of it from the side and appreciate the bridge work, appreciate the structure. You can even appreciate via a cutout in the bridge, the column wheel mechanism. Now you see as I actuate the chronograph, you can see the column wheel cycling as it interacts with its levers and horns. It is a COSC chronometer in the sense that it meets the ISO 3159 timing standards that define the COSC test, but it is more than that. It has the METAS standard established between Omega and the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology, which is a tested, fully cased up watch and movement together. The way you would wear it, rather than the bare movement of the COSC, resistances, winding efficiency, chronometric precision, power reserve, all of this goes into the METAS standard, so the watch earns the moniker Master Chronometer rather than simply Chronometer. You can see and you can purchase this stainless steel Master Chronometer on our website. 
Okay, I promised you a loom shot, and here it is. You're looking at the Omega Speedmaster Racing Master Chronometer, 44.25 millimeters in stainless steel. You can see this watch and light it up on our website.